Hello race fans, Dan Selby here. Mercedes innovative dual axis steering system was the talk of testing, but teams have been told that they won't be allowed to run similar systems from 2021. Has F1 made the right decision to outlaw DAS? I'm joined as usual by race fans editor Keith Collentine. So Keith, let's get straight into it. Is DAS the kind of innovation that we want from F1? Well, I think when we were watching testing and we first got our you know, very first glimpses of this, it caused a huge amount of intrigue, didn't it? It, it really got people talking. We had on the second day of preseason testing um, from Catalonia, we suddenly got this onboard footage of, uh, I can't remember if it was Bottas or Hamilton first, I think it was Bottas, moving the steering wheel backwards and forwards. And this prompted this you know, fascinating rush of, you know, what exactly are they doing? What's the system there for? And it really was, you know, pretty much the big story of testing, the big story of the season, really, until the season kind of got postponed. So I think that is in itself a fascinating thing. What's unusual about DAS is, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are tons and tons of innovations in Formula One, but they're normally hidden under a way, under the skins of the cars, in the power units, and we don't necessarily get to know about them. But this is something you could see. It was tangible. It's kind of like the modern equivalent almost of something crazy like the six wheeler cars we had in the 70s in that you could actually see this really unusual and completely unique, as far as we know at the moment, system on their car. So I thought, yeah, that was great. As, as far as F1's concerned, that's kind of what Formula One's supposed to be. So how have the rules been changed to ban the DAS? Well, when we first saw DAS on the cars, it came to light fairly soon afterwards that while the device seemed to be legal for 2020, and remember, we never got to the point where the car was scrutinized after a race. So it, it, when we do get our first race of 2020, it does remain possible it could be subject to a protest. While it appears to be legal for 2020, the rules for 2021 as originally written were going to outlaw it because, of course, they were going to bring in these completely new, radically redesigned cars. And part of the new regulation that had been put in there was a line in a fairly technical way that was going to ban DAS. Then, of course, we had the big postponement, uh, the first eight races uh, delayed or called off and the big need to cut costs as a result of that. And so they decided to put back the introduction of these new cars. That meant that the current cars could continue, and that seemed to create a window of opportunity where DAS might be allowed to continue into 2021. But the FIA has now closed that off. And so while next year's rules will be the same as this year's, they have added in the clause from the 2021 regs that basically prevents teams from using DAS. So why have they done that? Why have they got rid of it? Fundamentally, it's a matter of costs. Um, and costs obviously have been a huge talking point in Formula 1 for a long time and a big part of the goal of the original 2021 technical regulation changes that are now coming in 2022 were to help bring those costs down but the present situation with the postponement to the start of the season has made teams cost concerns even greater because fundamentally there isn't the source of income coming into the sport now the races aren't being held so there's no race hosting fees and the races aren't being broadcast so the money isn't there or coming in yet from the television broadcasters everything's been held up and like so many other businesses and so many other industries uh, the teams are in a in a state of considerable uncertainty over how much money is going to come in and when and we can already see uh, this belt tightening is going on the postponement to the rules has happened um, and then as far as DAS specifically is concerned for the nine teams that have not got it any of those that wanted to develop it would have to spend probably pretty considerable sums of money to do it and as long as it seemed DAS might be legal in 2021 and we can't rule out the possibility that they would delay the technical regulations even further and then have potentially kept it legal for even longer I'm pretty sure that's why the FIA has stepped in now to say this device isn't going to be allowed in 2021. It's so difficult, isn't it? Because I think you mentioned a little bit earlier that essentially innovation is part of Formula One. That That is part of what Formula One is, that race um, off track. But I, I, I'm so mixed on this one because, you know, you look back at something like the 2009 season, for example, we all remember the, the double-decker diffusers. It's a great story. It, it was uh, imagined at Super Aguri, which was then passed on to Honda, which was subsequently passed on to Braun. I think it's slightly easy to perhaps wear the rose tints and forget about the inquiries that hung over Melbourne that year. And, you know, nobody wants a scenario whereby you are watching a race, you see a winner, but then you're not sure if the winner is, in fact, the winner. So... I'm really torn on this one, but what I'm going to say is I think the way that they've handled it with this particular device, 
the DAS is, um, I, I think it's spot on. You mentioned costs as well. In, in this time we're living in at the moment, whereby, uh, you know, some of the teams, it's understood, uh, are, are potentially struggling out there. Do we really want a situation whereby they're having to throw so much money just to try and get on par with some of these other teams who have already got such an enormous head start with this DAS? I think that banning it at the end of the season is probably the fairest way to do it. At least that way you get to prosper from this innovation, um, but then you always have that clean set of rules for the next season. What's your thoughts on it, Keith? I broadly agree. And I think you have to remember as well, uh, Ross Braun has talked about in future seasons. And again, this was originally being concerned for 2021 to... Uh, basically ban technologies that they feel try to work around the rules even more quickly than waiting until the end of the season and potentially doing it you know after the first race at which they appear um, whether das meets that criteria for them i don't really know um, but in terms of what they've done this time around i think they've basically done like you say what they had to do i mean again you have to come back to the fact that we have these unprecedented situations but i think the broader problem that formula one's got to grasp that it was already trying to get its head around for 2021 and that the current situation is made even more complicated is just how much innovation can it allow to have. Formula One wants to be all things to all people in many ways. You know, it needs to keep a lid on costs for obvious reasons. That racing has got to be spectacular and close and exciting, uh, but it's also got to be safe. And then on top of all that, we also want it to be, you know, this racing laboratory or this engineering competition where teams do fantastic things and where teams are able in times of dire need like this to lend a help with things like developing ventilators because they've got that astonishing cutting edge level technology and that engineering expertise trying to fulfill all those things is really difficult and the more you cut away the opportunity for the teams to come up with things like das the more you take away something that's intrinsic to Formula One, something that, to use that very hackneyed phrase, is part of its DNA. So there is something being lost here. And I think, you know, if and when we ever get these regulations that were first designed to come in in 2021, when those finally arrive, I really hope that we are still able to see innovative thinking and and the kind of innovation like this that we can appreciate from the outside and not just the stuff that's buried underneath the skins of the cars that we never get to see. Of course, with the season on hiatus, it remains to be seen what kind of advantage Mercedes might get from DAS if they're able to run it, and if we ever get to see it in action. For the latest developments on what F1 is doing to get its 2020 season running, follow at racefans.net on Twitter and Facebook. But first of all, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our next video. From me and from Keith, thanks for watching.